Hi, my name is Aaron Rhodes from Falafel Software. You are watching the Telerik RadGrid drag and drop tutorial. In this session, we're going to learn how to drag and drop rows between grids. During this video, there may be code examples written in either Visual Basic or C Sharp. However, the concepts are the same and code is provided for you in both languages. In this example, we'll create a website with multiple grids. You'll be able to select one or multiple rows from one grid and drag it to the other and then use that information to change the data. I've gone ahead and created an ASP.NET AJAX enabled website and I'm going to drop a couple of grids on the form. The first grid, to tell them apart, I'm actually going to change the ID property to pending grid and then one more grid we'll call it shipped grid and you'll understand why I'm naming those in a second because the next thing we're going to do is configure the data sources so a new data source for our pending grid it'll be an SQL data source will connect to the Northwind database. If you don't have the Northwind database installed, you can refer to the link above. Save the connection string. And I'm actually going to specify a custom SQL statement because I want to use a join. I'll enter the query builder and it's going to ask me which tables I want to use. I want to use orders and customers because orders has a customer ID and I'd rather display the customer's name. So we'll add those, close this dialog, and then in our query builder, it's going to show in the visualizer our two tables, and the fields I want to display are order ID, company name, and order date. Additionally, I want to add a WHERE clause. My WHERE clause will be WHERE ORDERS shipped date is null because for the pending orders their ship date doesn't exist yet because it hasn't been shipped so that field will be null. Click OK. Next let's test our query. That looks good to me. And let's move on to our next data source. This is a new data source using an SQL database and we'll use the same Northwind connection string. We'll again specify a custom query. In our query builder, the same orders and customers tables. And this will be slightly different. We still need order ID company name, order date, we also need shipped date to display in this one, and again a where clause, but this where will be is not null. So these two grids will be showing a split of the data from the actual data table. Click OK. Next, test our query. That looks good. We can finish. Now we need to set a bunch of properties for these grids. Right off the bat, I want to change the skin of our pending grid to be sunset and the skin of our shipped to be hay. I also need to change the width of my grids because I want them to display side by side and that won't do very well at their current width. I'll change the first one to be 400 pixels and since 
our shipped grid will have an extra column. We'll change its width to be 500. Now there are a bunch of properties that these grids are going to have in common with each other. So I'm going to select both of them by holding down on control and clicking on them. And the first property I want to change is to enable paging. So down in paging, we'll change allow paging to true. And if we scroll up to our client settings, we're going to need to change some of the selecting properties. Allow row select, this we want to turn to true. And we want to allow row drag drop to true. And if we scroll up to behavior, we're going to allow multi row selection. If we run this right now, we'll see that we have the grids showing the data and we can select and drag rows but it doesn't actually change any of the data or do anything it also doesn't look very well laid out so we're going to take care of that next and this is a job for a style sheet I have already prepared a style sheet in a styles folder that I'm going to drop into our project and if you want to take a look at it it references the shipped grid and pending grid IDs and as soon as we go into the markup of our form and add a link to that style sheet so you can see that now when we look at the design it should be lined up side by side that's really nice. I also kind of want some labels there. So I have a div with just a couple of labels in it that I'm also going to add here. And if we look at that, we'll see some labels here. And if we run, see everything lines up really nice. That's CSS magic for you. Now we need to make the drag and drop work. The way we do that is in our, the events for our pending orders form, we're going to look for an event called row drop. Double click there, that'll create our event. And I'm going to paste in this code here. What the code is doing is, in a for loop, because we can multi-select items, it's going to loop as many times as there are items, and the data source update command we're going to update to be update orders set ship date to the current timestamp where the order ID equals our dragged items key data value of order ID. So the row we're dragging over has an order ID in it. We're grabbing that order ID and updating the ship date just to be the current date and time. And then we have to call update on the data source and since our shipped grid doesn't use data source 1 we're going to rebind so that it updates with the new now shipped order that it can display and we're going to do about the same thing for our shipped grid the only difference is that when we drag an order from the shipped grid to the pending grid we're going to set the shipped date to null everything else in the code is the same. Let's run this and see how we did. Well, we have our nice grids, everything's laid out well. We can select or even multi-select items and they will show up 
in our shipped orders, or if we drag an item back to our pending orders, say you made a mistake and shipped the wrong order, and it, no, it's not really shipped, so you want to undo that. And this is a really intuitive way of creating an interface for changing data. This concludes our tutorial. For more information, follow the links above. And thanks for watching.